Why did you feel there was a need for a book like this? Basics are basics. That's why they're called basics because they don't change. And there are some people who work only on insights and they forget the data. And then you connect those points. Rarely could, you, you, you have to have a miracle or you have to be very lucky. It is not making money, no. Give us a sense of what's in this chapter, touching customers' hearts. Like the brands that you, who's the friend you like and who's the friend you don't like. Take a call on, I like this brand, I don't like this brand. What are the business basics that haven't changed over the years? Nothing has changed. Uh, you know, charity, work culture that contributes to the purpose of the business. Good morning, welcome to a BW Dialogue. Today we are talking to Mr. Harit Nagpal, who's the MD and CEO of Tara Play on his maiden book, Adapt to Thrive, Not Just Survive. Uh, it's a book that brings back the focus on uh, how to identify who your customer is, what are the customer segments, what are the customers you don't want. In a world of abundance where there are enough customers for every product and service, somewhere business owners and marketers, uh, sometimes I feel don't put a lot of focus on the questions Harit has raised in at the end of every chapter. This is a book, when I started reading it, I read two chapters at the first go. It made me think about my business. I'm sure when you read it, you'll want to apply the questions to your own business. Welcome, Mr. Harit Nagpal. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. To this BW Dialogue. Yeah. What made you write this book? Why did you feel there was a need for a book like this? Anurag, I've been, I've spent about four decades in the industry, six industries, and wherever I've gone, I'm always told that, <clears throat> you know, the world is changing, the basics are changing. It's like saying that, you know, the sun has started revolving around the earth or the earth has again become flat. Uh, basics don't change. I mean, just about a few days ago, I posted an opinion poll on one of the social media sites where I asked, business basics remain constant or business basics change with time? 83% people of 700 plus people responded with the fact, business basics change with time. Basics are basics. That's why they're called basics because they don't change. So. This was a book to remind people that basics remain constant, the environment around us changes and we have to adapt to them. Basics don't change. So I have basically picked up about 10 business basics and written a fictionalized account for on each one of them. Just to remind people that basics don't change, environment changes and the second thing, changing environment or disruption as we call it these days. Uh, is not a threat, is not something that you have to avoid. Actually, a good business person starts looking at, should start looking at opportunities in a disruption. If there is a disruption happening around us, how do I catapult my business using the disruption as an opportunity? So, that's, those are the few thoughts that were in my head before I started writing this. Now, um you call the book Adapt to Thrive, Not Just thri uh, Survive yeah. and you put the f image of a chameleon. chameleon whose best known secret is to be able to adapt to every surface that he is on. Do you think Indian businesses are adapting well? Uh, because you said the best part of doing the book was researching sectors uh, and industries that you weren't part of, though you have been part of four or five industries. So, give us a sense of uh, why this name, why this image and do you really think Indian businesses have kept pace with changes? So, so look at the chameleon. Uh, the chameleon actually changes its colors based on the environment and it does so only to survive, not to get noticed, you know, blend in and you know, survive, not thrive. What is the life of a chameleon? 50,000 years ago or even 5 lakh years ago, the life of the chameleon was exactly what it is today, the quality of a chameleon's life. Your and my life, if you see over the last 30, 40 years, has been changing, getting better every passing year. The quality of life that we are leading today is better than what it was a year ago, certainly better than what it was 5 years ago and most certainly better than what it was 10 years ago. So, humans have learned to thrive in a changing environment. A chameleon has learned to survive 
this was just a symbol of how can you survive and how can you thrive. Uh, businesses not just in India but anywhere in the world have actually learned to thrive because businesses ultimate objective is to create products and services for people like you and me. And if our lives have changed dramatically over the last years, then the businesses must have thrived. They couldn't have just survived. Give us an example of <coughs> a business in India that you think has really kept pace and adapted and has... Th I think that's true of every sector. Look at any, you can name any service that you're using today. Is it the same as what it was a year ago? Are new features being added? And is the pace of adding new features gone up? Telecom, media, airlines, motorcycles, retail. You, whatever business comes to your mind, just compare what they were offering a year ago and what they are offering today. And certainly if you compare what they were offering 10 years ago versus what they are offering today, things have changed. And they are changing at a much more rapid pace than they were. Now, you can't say that for every operator in every industry. But for sure, there are one or two operators in every industry who are changing much more rapidly than they were in the past. And they are the ones who are leading. Okay. Uh, now, let me ask you. The book is a lot about identifying your customers, segmenting the customers. Before you launch a product or service, asking fundamental questions, who is your customer? Why will he or she buy it? What are the offerings available to them? Uh, what are the customers you don't want? Right? Do you feel that in an era of abundance where almost everything sells uh, because of certain numbers in this country uh, and affluence growing in the country, uh, do you think business owners and marketeers have forgotten uh, this very basic art of segmentation or is it being ignored, especially by the startups? So, my observation has been that a lot of businesses are products in search of customers or technologies in search of customers. I have discovered a great technology. I think it can make up for a good product. Now, I do not know whether it has 10 customers or 10,000 customers or 10 million customers. How fragmented are they located? Do I, can I even reach them by communication and tell them my proposition? Can I physically reach them in terms of distribution? I have not studied that. So, there are two parts to it. First part, how do you, how do you design the pros, uh, product or a service? One is that you discover a technology and then you start looking for customers for it. Second is, you go to a customer and figure out what his needs, latent needs are and then you go back to technology and ask them to create a solution for those problems. The ideal way obviously is to figure out what the customer's pain points are and then go to technology to create a product or a service or a proposition for that person. That's the ideal way. You will be solving, you will be 100% fit there. Are we, how often are we doing that? I am not sure. Some are, some are not. So that's one big part. And the second big part is every business's purpose is to make money. If you are a product in search of a customer who is scattered all over the place and it will take you a lot of money to communicate your product to them and to deliver the product to them, then you may not make money. You may have a good product, but you may not make money in the end and therefore your sustainability will be in question. So from both these perspectives, it is always better to figure out what is my benefit of the product that I am selling. Where is my customer? Where is are our profitable customers? Where are the profitable customers? And are they willing to pay the kind of money that uh, I am asking them for? Now, I was reading one of the chapters where it is a traditional, at least in the setting in the book, a traditional publishing business. And the father says, do you think Steve Jobs went home to home asking people what they need? Right? So, really, there are formal ways of doing market research and segmentation and the informal ways, which are observation, uh, asking fundamental questions. Uh, what do you think works in today's environment? Because there is enough data, but are there enough insights? You need both. So, 
I've seen people who are obsessed with data, so much obsessed with data, they lose sight of the insights. And there are some people who work only on insights and they forget the data. And if you hang on with one of these methods, it doesn't work. Data is supposed to give you some ideas as to what to look for. You, you know, give you some data points as we call you, call them. And then you connect those points and that creates an insight. So it's a combination of what you observe and what the data tells you. And that leads to an insight. Uh, by themselves, data alone or insights alone, rarely could, you, you, you have to have a miracle or you have to be very lucky to be able to produce an, uh, you know, a proposition out of just an insight or just data. Now coming to the 10 chapters in the book, when an author writes a book, of course, all the chapters are important, but is there a favorite chapter of Arindana? These are basics. You can't avoid them. So, you, this is a building that we're sitting in. Uh, you say, which pillar is more important? No. I think every pillar is important because if one pillar gives away, the others may not stand. Now, one of the chapters is touching customer's heart, creating a brand that connects. Mm. In a era of pl multiple choices in a category, multiple offerings, uh, the connect with the consumer matters. It always mattered. Uh, that's why customers love brands and stick by them. Give us a sense of what's in this chapter, touching customers' hearts. So yeah, you know, a lot of advertising you see, for example, when you sit down in the evening, watch about one hour of television, you see about 10, 12 ads, or maybe 15. Uh, just make a take. How many did you connect with? How many do you recall? How many made you like the brands that you and very few. Uh, we've, we've gone into a sell mode. We're not in the tell mode or, you know, endear the customer mode. And in this chapter, for example, there's a conversation between a father and a son, where the father casually asks the son about his friends. And, and the son says, this is the friend I like and this is the friend I don't like. And the father's probing deeper and saying, okay, why don't you like him and why do you like him? And the questions come that this one is uh, caring for others, uh, this one is spending beyond his means and the father says, is he spending your money? And the guy says, no, he's not, but he's spending beyond his means. And he says, look, brands are like people. You've just decided based on the activities of your friends, who's the friend you like and who's the friend you don't like. Customers in the same way, based on the activities of brands, take a call on, I like this brand, I don't like this brand. So do things when you're launching a brand, do things that our customer is likely to uh, like. Identify with that, and affinity. And affinity, endear, find it endearing. So he's tried to explain it through metaphors he's used from friends and other things. Now in your introduction, you talked about that the basics haven't changed. You talked in and you talked in the introduction in the book, that retaining good talent takes effort. Getting people to work in teams takes efforts. You still work in silos. Uh, now, what are the business basics that haven't changed over the years? Nothing has changed. The basics are still the same. You still need to have a proposition. You still need to have a proposition that appeals to the customer. You need to produce it at a price at which the customer is willing to pay. You need to communicate it so that it touches his heart and therefore he wants to buy you. You need to make it available close to his house. Right, right. You need to have an organization where uh, people are, uh, there are like-minded people who are willing to work in teams uh, towards the customer, listen to the customer and keep modifying the product. Uh, they need to stay. Uh, you need to have a work culture. So, you need to have, you know, you need to have constant ongoing innovation in the organization. These are basics which were being done by businesses 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 10 years ago and yesterday and will we'll continue over the next, I don't know, how many decades. Now, clearly, uh, you have a chapter on work culture where a healthy team engages everyone. That's the title of the chapter. Give us a sense of what's in this chapter. Well, uh, you could have people working in silos and, uh, you know, uh, very, very often when you walk into an organization and you ask them, and this I have seen uh, personally also, say, okay, uh, explain to me in one word, what is the culture of this organization? And most importantly, uh, the words that come in are of uh, uh, togetherness and, uh, uh, you know, charity and trust and all those kinds of things. They may or may not 
connect with the business objective of the organization the industry that they're in the need of the organization that it is fulfilling in the industry life cycle that we're sitting on so the words that need to be picked up by an organization which define its work culture need not be values values are very important we need to have them our parents taught them that uh, like you know i will not take what is not ours and things like that but these are not work culture statements work culture statements are collaboration uh, you know experimenting taking ownership speed depending on what stage of life cycle you are in culture is very important that's what you said work culture is important work culture that contributes to the purpose of the business at that state in time. so i may have a work culture that requires collaboration right now tomorrow speed may become of importance in early stage of the life cycle of a business experimentation may become uh, in a small organization ownership may be of prime importance so you have to define basis what stage of life cycle you're in and what is the nature of business you're in what are the cultural elements that will contribute to the end result or delivery of your business objective values are essential for every business that i will contribute to the society or i will not take what is not mine or i'll pay my taxes or i'll be a good citizen these are things that are a must these are bedrocks now there is a chapter which is called from power point to one point where you talk of very focused reviews which lead to progress of the business i think um, as a business owner i re- really like this chapter because really that gives you insights and tells you what's working what's not working what you need to do for the future give us a sense of what is your uh, own feeling when it comes to business reviews in india do we do it right what can we do better what you should not do is don't use the reviews to punish those who failed in the past use reviews whatever has happened has happened you can't rewrite history i think the purpose of a review should be to identify opportunities for the future with that's all we can control we can't control the past the problem is 90% of the times most reviews are trying to figure out who made a mistake where did we go wrong yeah it's important but more important is where is the opportunity what can we do better and if the focus shifts from 20% of what can we do better and 80% of who made the mistake to 80% of what we can do better and 20% okay where we made the mistake and let's learn from it uh reviews would be much more productive now let me ask you you talk about more than an assembly of parts you talk of margins how to build profitable businesses right uh give us a sense of why is this chapter important have you seen businesses doing lines of business which are not very profitable but just almost every, every business has a few lines which are pets of the owner or the ceo or somebody in the organization uh, it is not making money it is not even serving a customer purpose but it is there because i like it every business has a couple of lines uh, why are they there why can't we be dispassionate it's not serving the company's objective it is bleeding the bottom line it doesn't even have a future in the foreseeable future uh, 20 years later you may start making money but for 19 years you would have lost much more than it will ever make in its lifetime uh, and it's not even serving a customer purpose otherwise they would have bought it at a price that you were it was costing you but we carry them and every business has a couple of these lines mm. now let me ask you who is this book for is it for the ceo of a business is it for a founder of a business is it for the cmo is who is who should be reading your book so why after i got the manuscript right i actually sent it out to a few of my trusted friends and colleagues just to get their feedback as to am i doing the right thing is it appealing somewhere and who's the audience exactly the question as to who should i be pitching it for because if i'm writing about customer segmentation then i should also be following the customer segmentation process myself and the feedback that i've got so far is uh, uh, yes 
uh, it is important for the students so that they form their basics right, right in the beginning. But are the, if you take the whole spectrum, are the people at the top in the C-suit levels also following all the basics or are they taking them for granted and going by gut most of the times? Uh, like you rightly yourself said that when I read it, the questions I tried to apply, uh, apply to them to them to my business, and I found that we were also not doing some of those things. So what has come out at least so far is that it's relevant to the student, to the young executive, and even to senior uh, people uh, who may have forgotten some of the basics or applying some of those basics uh, to the businesses. Okay. Now, you've been in leadership positions for at least two decades, uh, more than two decades. You worked for four decades. You said business basics have pretty remained the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. Has the leadership styles of leaders changed in the last decade or so? Leaders are getting a little more participative. It's not a unidirectional uh, flow. Yes, uh, four decades ago, the person at the top was supposed to know everything and was supposed to be telling you what to do and you did what was. Management style has become a little more participative, a lot more participative, I would say, over the last four decades, I've seen that. Because people have realized that one person can't know everything, uh, more and more, and that's, that's the cause of it. Now, let me also ask, you worked in five, six industries, but you worked in telecom, now 14 years at Tara's play, right? What is happening in the media and in, uh, you know, entertainment domain? Mm. Because that's a business that you built from scratch. Uh, where are we headed? What are the two, three trends that are so big right now that we can see them? Uh, but there are two, three trends that are very small, but are likely to become very big in the future. Well, I don't think media industry has ever been uh, consistent, constant or st static uh, as you may use it. You and I have seen, we did not even have television, then we had only one black and white channel and then we had multiple colored channels and TV screens became larger, uh, OTT appeared uh, and now it's a combination of uh, everything. So when when a new technology emerges or a new platform emerges, the older ones don't die. Uh, they coexist. For example, if a private plane has come into play, commercial airlines don't die. And trains also keep growing. We are launching a Vande Bharat every week. And buses are also growing. And there is a metro in every city. But uh, motorcycles and cars are not reducing in uh, numbers. So, every platform continues to grow. So, there is an emergence of new platforms that is happening. OTT is coming. Uh, it will find its own shape in which it will come out. Right now, it's a plethora of uh, apps. These apps will need an aggregator, just like TV started off as multiple channels, then aggregators by way of cable and DTH appeared. Similarly, there will be aggregators that will appear in OTT also, because in the end, the customer has got to find it easy to discover the content that he or she wants to watch and we got to make that happen. So, that's what it is moving towards. Any industry at any given point in time is in a state of flux because new, new technologies are emerging and are consolidating and are getting better. That's where we are. Now, the one thing on everyone's mind, the last 12 months is the emergence of artificial intelligence. Uh, the growth of generative AI. Uh, give us a sense of how is it impacting your business and you also talk about how we evolved from, you know, means of communication to today using AI in our business. So give a sense of how you are using it in your business. Uh, what are the implications you see? So, any new technology, I mean when email came or laptops came or computers came or IT came, uh, made the tediousness of your business, reduce the tediousness of the business. She was spending less time in searching for things or creating data points and more time connecting them. 
ए आई इज अ लीप अ बिग लीप विच विल सेव यू लॉट ऑफ टाइम इन द डूइंग पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड इनक्रीज द टाइम ऑन द थिंकिंग इन द कनेक्टिंग पार्ट एज सच सो आई सी इट एज अ लीप जस्ट एज ई मेल वॉज और कंप्यूटर्स वर और एक्सेल वॉज और एनी ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजीज दैट केम इन द पास्ट it's it's only going to improve the quality of our lives absolutely my last question to you we are entering a new year we're in jan 2024 what are the things it's a big year because there are elections it's a big year because there is a ram mandir also very importantly there are big events uh the events in the cricketing calendar events in the musical calendar uh, what are your expectations from 2024 nothing different from the previous years and what were those uh, more things will happen more often and as our life now a uh, few things used to happen less often when we were young and with every passing year uh, the number of things and the frequency of those things has only increased and you will have and the each of those events also became bigger because technology helped us make them appear bigger so that's exactly what is going to have in, happen in 24 there'll be more events there'll be larger events and they'll happen more frequently and that's going to be the story of our lives going forward every year and though i said last but let me ask you what is how do you keep yourself updated and try and evolve and the fact that you've been able to evolve your business very entrepreneurially you you've been there for 14 years uh, you got a lot of things right how do you make sure you adapt you thrive what is your personal leadership mantra you know what do you do to be able to spot trends give us a sense of that so i've reached the conclusion that i know that i don't know everything i can't know everything and i can't do everything therefore you 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 have a team uh which is uh, capable uh, attitudinally right you give them inspiring objectives and get out of their way so that they are uh, when they are busy doing what we agreed to do you are not breathing down their necks because i have always personally hated people who breathe down my neck when i was delivering when i was younger so i don't come in their way they deliver and that leaves me with a lot of free time to spot new trends go meet customers check out what's happening uh, so that i can create more inspiring targets for them going forward while i'm sipping coffee so it's uh, it's spending more time with the customers spotting trends and creating more ins- inspiring agendas for the organization is where i spend my time thank you so much mr nakbal thank you for talking to bw business Pleasure. world Pleasure. you would recommend by the way in our 2024 jan uh, first edition the 12 books to read in 2024 uh, mr nakpal's book adapt to thrive not just survive is one of those books so you can read it i enjoyed reading it i'm sure you'll enjoy reading it thank you very much thank pleasure you.